This week on Military Collectors, we normally don't do this, but because here at the American Armor Foundation Tank Museum in Danville, Virginia, they've got an actual demonstration that they do twice a year here with the flamethrower. We've got one from World War II, and we've also got one from the Vietnam era, and we're going to actually demonstrate these. But first, let's hear a little bit about the history about the flamethrower throughout the U.S. military. The flamethrower's history can be traced all the way back to the first century AD, where the Greeks used them. In modern times, they were used during World War I and more widely in World War II. The flamethrower was first used in modern times in World War I in February of 1915, when the German army used it in battle against French forces. The German army used the flamethrower in over 300 battles during World War I. In 1942, the U.S. Army introduced its own man-portable flamethrower. The vulnerability of infantry carrying backpack flamethrowers which weighed in at over 80 pounds and the weapon's short range led to experiments with tank-mounted flamethrowers. Flamethrowers were used by a large number of countries during World War II, and the U.S. Army used them during the Korea and Vietnam Wars. Flamethrowers have not been in the United States arsenal since 1978 because of their ineffectiveness in modern combat. And in 2008, the United Nations prohibited the use of flamethrowers during wartime. Well, joining us now is two brothers and the Brothers Team Gasser right here at the American Armor Foundation Tank Museum in Danville. And I'll tell you what, you know, Dan and his brother Doug right here are gonna, real, they're really gonna show us the demonstration of two of these. Again, the World War II, which um, Doug's got on now. But Dan, tell me a little bit about what we can expect to see here. Because again, you guys do this twice a year for the Correct. public. Yep. You guys are only one of probably five locations in the United States that actually even has these, Correct. but let alone demonstrate them. Tell us about that. Well, we love playing with flamethrowers. Um, they're great to show the public how they've been used. Um, we have two units to show you. Um, right here, you got the World War II unit. Um, we have it modified to run a torch setup, which is a whole lot safer, right. okay, which is reliable. Um, you got your fuel system right here that delivers your fuel. Your torch lights your fuel. Um, which you basically and this have, is heavy, Doug. You, know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. you have your two fuel tanks with a, with a pressure gauge on top, your fuel tank, and your regulator. The, f the, f the pressure will actually pressurize the fuel system, right? which actually, when he pulls the trigger, will go through the hose, and then you're going to hear a big fireball. Wow, you know, you so know pretty I, simple setup. You know, it works very well. You know, but uh, you're going to see some fun here. Well, the, the thing is, I know the viewing public loves to see this. I mean, when's the last time you've ever seen, uh, other than in a movie reel or something, actually see the demo like this? No, there's not very many places in the country you can go to even see anybody play with flamethrowers. Oh, okay. and we love playing with them here. You know, All right, we well, do. listen, folks, we're we're going to stand back here, follow along. We're going to let Doug get out here on the front lines, okay? And now, let's, let's walk all the folks through what you're getting ready to do. All right, he's going to go ahead and pressurize the system. Go ahead. 250, you're good to go. You're clear, no leaks. You're good to go. We're just going to step back here and we're so, going to watch him do so it. So the flamethrower is hot. It is hot. Okay. The flamethrower is hot. Quick little burst here. Whew. Now he's going to give you a good burst. Whoo! <laughs> There he goes, he's gonna do it up first, and make a corkscrew, twist it around a little bit. Oh my goodness. Mm. That That's a flamethrower. Is a flamethrower. <laughs> you know that the, And talk about heat. Mm. Okay. Stop, 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 stop. Let me get it down. So that's going to get all the pressure you off the tanks. Be bleeders open. Bleeders open. is now safe. Oh my goodness. Look at that. You know, I, I have to say, it looks much better than it does in the movies when you're in person. <laughs> and you know, the thing is, you can't take what these did during wartime lightly. Because Correct. again, can you imagine being on that other end of that thing? Sure. I yeah. mean, you know, and for all of you collectors out there, you veterans, come down to the AAF Tank Museum here in Danville, and you just can't imagine 
the excitement that you're going to see to see one of these that are in an operable condition, you know. I mean, I know, Dan, that, that your dad and, and your mom, when, you know, when they started this, and of course now you two brothers have taken it over. I mean, again, there's just nothing else that I've ever seen in modern day like this, okay? I mean, they don't even do it in the movies. Mm -hmm. They're extreme weapons. They are very extreme, and that's why we like to use them, so people could see what this weapon was about. And you see in movies, it doesn't do it justice. You actually have to see it fired, and you're like, wow, that's hot. You know, you back up, you feel your, your skin start getting hot. That's what these weapons are about. Okay, Dan, World War II, steel, heavy. Now we got Vietnam era. What was the major differences besides weight? Well, obviously, you know, it was made of aluminum, so a whole lot nicer for the guy. Um, your tank system is a little different. Right. Regulator system is a little different. This tank is designed to be taken off so you can fill it versus that one you fill on it. I okay? got you. Um, still quick, a whole lot easier to use, okay, user friendly, okay, a little more than the other one. Uh, aluminum frame, better straps versus the World War II unit. Wow. So, so all around, we like the Vietnam one better. <laughs> well, and you know, guys in the Chemical Corps who had that MOS, um, they were responsible for these, okay? As, as we called them when I was on active duty, bug and gas. So <laughs> with that, we're going to have a lot of bugs and a lot of gas here, Doug, okay? Sure. You, you, you know, I'll tell you what, you do this well, my friend, huh? <laughs> now, let's fire this one. Any difference in the flames? All the same. About the same. We shoot the same pressures, so the fireball will be about the same length. Okay. You know, it's more user friendly. I got <laughs> you. Again, AAF, the Tank Museum, Danville. Oh, I'm telling you, flamethrowers, military collectors is right all over it. All right. Come on, Doug. Right, come on out there. Let's do it again, brother. Pressurize your tank. Watch your valve. Gauge. Go for it. Going hot. And the reason I'm being so quiet, folks, is. 100. Uh, this is kind of tedious 250. business. Flamethrower is hot. Okay, it's hot. This is not to be taken lightly. Mm. Give you a little burst here real quick. Oh. Imagine let it rip. Look at that. Wow. Now, the, the length of throw for this is what, 50 feet average? Yeah, somewhere around there. Like okay. I said, we don't shoot at real high pressures because right. of our antique weapons. Right. You know? So we try to keep it as safe as possible. This, I mean, it's just unfathomable. Of course, you know, guys in 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 the era, they were invaluable. Absolutely. For trench, yeah. uh, tunnels, you name it, bunkers, all that sort of stuff. So, all good. All good. Clear. I'll clear the venting. <laughs> Letting okay. all the pressure off. Equal out the pressure. Now, as far as how many gallons of fuel does these hold, Dan? Not a whole lot. You're probably looking at uh, about three to four. Yeah. This one holds a little bit less than the World War II I got unit. You. Uh, just because of the way the bottle setup is. I got you. you know. Yeah. Well, with it being made by with aluminum, it makes all the difference. Absolutely. So Absolutely. with yeah. that, I'm telling you. Yeah. If you mm. had to pick which one to put on your back, you want the aluminum one. <laughs>